Audi, Immortalium here, and today I'm doing a review of Helter Skelter by Kyoko Okazaki. Now, uh, if you haven't seen my review of her previous work, Pink, um, Kyoko Okazaki is generally regarded as kind of one of the architects for a kind of a demographic of manga called Jose, which is aimed at older women. And, um, you know, her works are, um, you know, very influential, very highly regarded. And uh, in fairness with Pink, you know, I really enjoy Pink. Uh, definitely check out that review if uh, you have yet to do so. Um, but anyway, uh, we're not talking about Pink right now, we're talking about Helter Skelter. So, um, Helter Skelter, uh, probably her most famous work, particularly since that it was adapted into a really successful live-action film. Um, what is the plot of Helter Skelter? Um, the plot of Helter Skelter is that we are introduced to a woman called Lilico. And Lilico is a model and an idol, um, you know, really, really successful. Um, she's appearing in, you know, pretty much all the TV shows. She's getting lots of interviews. Um, she's appearing in all the fashion magazines and, you know, she's being advertised all the time. So, um, you know, she's really, really successful. But we find out that, um, you know, she wasn't born uh, this beautiful. Um, in fact, her uh, beauty has been artificially created through, um, you know, lots of plastic surgery, um, to be more specific, some shady plastic surgery. Um, and uh, because of this, she's under kind of this severe um, kind of mental strain. Um, and uh, over the course of the story, um, you know, we are introduced to a cast of characters who are forced to deal with this uh, wildly mentally unstable uh, model. Um, and, uh, you know, that's how the plot of the story progresses. So, um, the, what, let's see what I thought of um, the characters. Uh, let's just start that off with that. Um, Lily Ko herself is very much um, an odd character. <laughs> that's the best way to describe her. Um, she is a wildly destructive force, um, pretty much causing havoc and, and destruction uh, to uh, people's relationships uh, who get involved with her. Um, she is uh, a very, you know, dangerous woman, not necessarily physically, but, you know, just from what she can do to you and have done to you. Um, and the fact that she's quite unpredictable. She can be nice, she can be, you know, vicious, she can be, you know, weepy or angry. Um, you know, she's very unpredictable. And um, definitely she had a lot of potential to be a really well, you know, developed character. But I do have to say... I wasn't, you know, I, I overall I wasn't really appealed to by her character, uh, mainly because of the fact that um, we, for some reason, we're always kind of kept at a distance from her, and we get some kind of um, hints as to her background, you know, um, like for example, we we're introduced to her sister, who kind of fills us in on uh, her family and how she grew up, etc., etc., and um, you know, all those kind of things, uh, but. I never, like, unlike in Pink, where even though the characters were very weird and um, uh, <laughs> they should have been unlikable, um, there was a point where all of a sudden I really started to care about the characters, I really started to like the characters. Helter Skelter and Lilico in particular, that never happened. I was always had this um, kind of a boundary between her and me that I was unable to actually kind of cross. Uh, maybe that's the point, but uh, <laughs> that meant that um, anything that happened to her or the people around her, I always felt a, kind of a muted sense. So that I did find a bit um, frustrating. Uh, and a lot of the other characters are kind of unmemorable in comparison. Like I can remember the names from uh, of the characters from Pink uh, very clearly. Um, Yumi, uh, Haru, Kaiko, etc., etc., Croc. But uh, Helter Skelter, Lilico, and that's it. You know, I read this more recently and I can't remember the other characters' names. So uh, they're only there really to uh, kind of demonstrate how um, destructive and unstable Lilico is. Lilico is very much the focus of this uh, manga. So uh, my issue with her kind of affected my enjoyment of this entire manga. Um, now, that's not to say that there aren't interesting themes in this manga, of course. Um, you know, the theme of, you know, how much does society um, kind of value beauty? Um, how, you know, how um, the kind of models are treated as almost kind of disposable. Uh, people go mad for them uh, at one moment and then all of a sudden forget about them. Um, 
and uh, yeah, like there's some really fascinating themes in this manga. Um, it's just the problem is uh, <laughs> the Lilico kind of gets in the way of the actual portrayal of the themes, but definitely I did find the themes very interesting and I think they could have been uh, well developed um, had the focus not necessarily been so kind of solely on uh, Lilico. If it had been more of a kind of ensemble piece, um, I, I would have enjoyed it more, I'd say. Now, just one thing I want to point out about the ending. Um, the ending is a bit inconclusive, but it has a to be continued at the end. And in fact, um, it actually explains um, afterwards that uh, Kyoko Okazaki, not long after, um, you know, doing this, uh, was hit by a drunk driver, um, you know, in a vehicle crash. And um, I think it caused her, like, lots of physical uh, strain as well as mental strain, from which... Is she still recovering? I'm not too sure. Uh, that would make it about 18 years. But the um, point is, um, you know, she had to stop uh, work for a very long time. Um, most certainly up to uh, 2003 at the very least. From since then, I'm not really sure how, um, you know, how her condition is. Um, but that did mean that um, she might have needed to cancel this series, basically, um, since, you know, of her predicament. So... The ending is a bit inconclusive, but I'm not going to blame Koko Okazaki on that. Um, it does have it to be continued, so maybe in the future when she is in a better condition, maybe we'll see a sequel to Helter Skelter, uh, particularly since it's her most well-known work now because it's a really successful film. I don't know. Um, but the uh, point is, um, the inconclu inconclusive ending, I'm not going to blame on her. Um, now, the artwork... I will say is it probably only point in this manga that I would actually say is an improvement on pink. Uh, when I say an improvement, what I mean is that um, there's a lot more detail in the characters, their proportions are kind of more correct, um, etc, etc. If I can give you some examples, it looks a lot more kind of conventional manga. Now, it's still a far distance from conventional manga, of course. They've still got this uh, very kind of cartoony um, sense about them. Um, as well as a, a kind of a, kind of a, how can I put it, um, kind of a, almost an unfiltered kind of look. Um, almost like as if um, these are only kind of like a step up from storyboards. Uh, but it's still a very appealing looking style. Now, overall, I, I have to say, um, I would probably prefer the artwork to pink, simply because of the fact that the pink was more stylized. But from an actual quality of art, um, uh, Helter Skelter is definitely superior. So... That I will say. That and uh, the paneling is still nice. Um, there's uh, very appropriate uses of boom pages. Um, there's not really any, many diagonals, but the um, actual paneling does flow well from, uh, you know, panel to panel. So, um, overall, um, the artwork and actual paneling is quite uh, successful. Uh, now, uh, Vertical's treatment of uh, this manga, uh, the, it opens up with uh, several color pages. Uh, these color pages, uh, some of them are quite uh, sexualized um, and maybe a bit inappropriate to show. So I'll just show you like a couple of uh, the more tamer examples. So we have this lovely piece, um, and uh, the very first one I believe is also quite appropriate, uh, this. Um, but those are the only color pages. Once you get into the actual um, book, um, it's completely black and white, nothing wrong there. Um, there's uh, the paper quality, like a lot of their other um, Jose titles, it's the actual quality of the paper is good, but it seems a slight bit thin, um, to the point where there is a bit of page bleeding that happens. Um, not overly much, but a little more than I would have liked, so um, that did distract slightly in my reading experience. So. Um, if they had just made the pages ever so slightly thicker, um, you know, I'm sure that would have been gone and you know, that would have been something removed. The actual translation, um, it seems to be very fluid. I didn't really notice any kind of uh, spelling mistakes or um, any grammatical mistakes. And if it seemed to flow well from sentence to sentence. So the actual translation does seem very nice. And then, of course, as I mentioned, they have a quick kind of about the author and then an explanation about, you know, the whole uh, drunk driver incident. So that's really the amount of uh, extras that you get at the end. So... Um, overall, uh, Vertical did a pretty good uh, treatment of this. Not only that, it's the same size as pink, um, as I'll show you what I mean from trim size. So, it's a bit bigger than your standard Tankoban, about this much bigger. 
uh, not sure if you can, yeah, you can kind of get a look there. So, uh, as you can see, a little wider, a little uh, taller, um, but, you know, not overly much. Uh, but it does allow the airport to kind of breathe a little easier. Um, so, overall, Helter Skelter, um, not, it didn't quite do as much for me as Pink. Um, now, that's not to say it's a bad manga. Um, it just, I do find it to be an inferior work to Pink. Um, now, if you're still into Jose, um, you know, it's well worth picking up simply because of the fact that it's from the, from Kyoko Okazaki, one of the kind of architects of Jose manga. It, there's still some very interesting themes, even though it's a very flawed work, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, the artwork is still very nice and very kind of uh, different to a lot of other manga that you would come across. Um, so that's kind of my opinion. But that, and it's worth reading just because of the fact that since it's one of the more famous Jose titles, it's, you know, it's a good uh, kind of conversation piece. Um, but yeah, I would recommend uh, people check out Pink first. And uh, if then if you re if you like Pink, uh, you, you know, you can check out Help Discover and get kind of develop your own opinion of this work. So um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe and bye bye.